Do you remember the last time you wanted something badly? The job, the internship, even just the interview? Do you remember thinking, I just want someone to talk with me about the things I want to do with my life? I remember it almost too clearly. I was 21 years old, nearing college graduation, with every ambition and zero direction. As hard as I had worked, it seemed everyone was telling me to land my dream job would be a one in a million shot. They said I should aim for something more practical. But I swore I just needed someone to take a chance on me. Fortunately, I met that someone. A week before college graduation, she hired me for the entry-level version of my dream job, a job I knew very little about in a city I had never been to. To this day, I have no idea why it happened. Maybe it was goodwill or instinct, or maybe she saw something in me. Regardless, that's when my world opened. When we talk about this type of professional opportunity, we usually talk about it in terms of finding, getting, or receiving. Much less often do we talk about giving it. Professional opportunities should be a reciprocal action, meaning what we are given, we give forward. So to begin this professional opportunity reciprocal cycle, we should examine not just how we will do it, but why we will do it. Adam Grant, he's an organizational psychologist, explains it simply. He says, the more I help out, the more successful I become. But I measure success and what it has done for the people around me. That is the real accolade. So where do we begin? Oftentimes, I, and likely most of us, get this feeling that I'm not qualified to give back. I'm too young, too new at the job, or too inexperienced. So many of us feel like we're not in a position to make a difference for someone else. We are, and it's simple. At my first post-college job, the company hired a new intern every fall, spring, and summer semester. Our intern was hired to answer phones, book flights, and pick up lunch. And while this is typical and very useful, these tasks don't better inform one's knowledge of the career or their career prospects. So I asked my boss if the intern could help support some of my very overwhelming workload, to which he agreed without much hesitation. And I began to invite our intern to take notes in high-level meetings that she normally wouldn't be allowed in. I had her draft press releases that we would edit together, and then I taught her how and who to send them to. In just weeks, our relationship went from teaching to delegating. The extra but minimal time I spent teaching her new skills made my life easier. So when it came time to hire a new intern, I asked my boss if we could hire a few additional. He again agreed, and we went from one coffee run-focused intern to four interns who were treated as beginning professionals that left us with legitimate job experience. Five years later, I am now very close colleagues with one of my first interns. Another intern of mine decided against the PR industry entirely. She absolutely hated the internship. But it's worth just as much to show someone a job they will love as it is to help someone avoid a job they will hate. Some opportunities like this build resumes, but others build conversations and connections. So many of us have had formal and informal mentors throughout our career journeys. Some of us are seeking a mentor for our next big steps. If you have ever sought or received a mentor, you should consider being one too. It's not too early or too late. Each of us have something to offer that intern or a student or the new assistant. When I was in school, I had a mentor who gave me a great piece of advice. She said to study the key players of the industry that I wanted to be a part of. So I memorized all the names of the top executives and I studied their campaigns. And while this knowledge would be to my advantage down the road, it actually didn't mean much at the moment. In a college class, a guest lecturer taught us how to network, saying, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. I had never thought of it like that. 
while I was doing all the right things, all these people that I studied and admired so greatly had no clue I even existed. So I went down a path of cold emailing the best in the business, asking for 15 minutes of time to talk about them. I wanted to learn, and hopefully, maybe, they would just remember my name when my resume crossed their desk one day. Almost no one replied to my emails or LinkedIn messages, and those who did said they did appreciate my reaching out, but they were far too busy to get on the phone with me for 15 minutes. And while I respect a, a busy schedule, what I find a little ironic is that seemingly every company requires two to three years of professional experience upon college graduation for entry-level positions. If I am expected to both gain and then give two to three years of experience, why is it so hard to get 15 minutes? If you understand the frustration I'm sharing, then you also hopefully understand the sheer joy of that first job offer or the ecstatic feeling of someone genuinely giving you a chance. My hope is that these don't feel like singular or one in a million experiences. If we all started to collectively give more often, we could change the community of new professionals. They would come into the job stronger, more skilled, and would bring more rewarding experiences to the table. A lot of people say, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door or, or open a window or something like that. I'm much more a fan of when you have what you need, build a longer table. If we all treated opportunity as something to move forward over and over again, we heighten the awareness of how to give and how easy it is. Think about a time an opportunity had an impact on you and then discover how you can give similarly. In the latter half of my college career, I was selected to receive a scholarship for aspiring marketing professionals. The financial support was incredible, but the confidence it gave me was almost more meaningful. I needed the encouragement that others outside of my close circle wanted to see me succeed and that they were willing to make an investment in it. I made it my goal to invest in someone's future one day too, even if I didn't know them. Last year, about four years after graduating, I returned to my university and I established a new scholarship for students pursuing marketing and PR. Professional opportunity can be given in so many different forms. For some, it is the hands-on experience of an internship or the conversations and connections built from mentorships and informational interviews. For others, financial support guides their journey with just as much impact. Giving in any form builds experiences and generates new ideas. But let's consider if we don't change? What if a few of us do these things that I'm discussing and the rest of us claim we don't have the time, the energy, or the resources? Well, we let those who are supposed to be coming next slip through the cracks. We miss out on their talent, their voice, and their contributions to the industries we care deeply about. So many of us love what we do because for us, it is how we became ourselves. Even Pablo Picasso is quoted as saying, when I was a child, my mother said to me, if you become a soldier, you'll be a general. If you become a monk, you'll be a pope. Instead, I became a painter and wound up as Picasso. Each of us exist in our proudest moments because someone else saw us and lifted us. Now it's time to be that someone for someone else. The opportunities we are given, we must give forward. <laughs>